guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're talking eyeshadow palettes. Eyeshadow is very near and dear to my heart. It's actually the eye makeup in general was the reason I was interested in makeup in the first place. I really wanted to learn how to do liquid liner. I spent years practicing, years getting used to it. From there, I really just loved eyeshadow. I loved the techniques, I loved the looks, and it was a bit challenging since I do have hooded lids. So when I was first starting out, I was trying all the techniques as everybody else was using, but of course, it doesn't necessarily always work the same on hooded lids as it does with not hooded lids. So it started this whole journey for me that ended, well not ended, it continued right here with my channel and with my collection. If you haven't seen my last eyeshadow palette collection video, I'll throw that up in the cards. I had, at that point, over 75 eyeshadow palettes. That was filmed a couple of months ago. I currently am sitting at around 100 eyeshadow palettes. I can't use all of them, right? I know this is a collection. I know this is something that I love to do, I love to have, and it is something that I use every day, though not all of them. So I thought it would be fun to show you guys out of my collection what palettes do I actually keep coming back to. Because I think that shows a lot about the quality of the palette and the quality of the color story in the palette. So before we jump into the video, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video, which is every Monday through Friday. So the first eyeshadow palette that I keep coming back to will be no surprise if you've seen my Pen That Palette series. It is my Pen That Palette for this year, the Marc Jacobs Velvet Icon, ooh. The Marc Jacobs Style Icon Palette in Lolita. It looks a little bit the same as it did in my last update video, which I will link up here in the cards as well. It is a very neutral palette, which is why I picked it for my first Pen That Palette. I have panned completely one shade, and I've hit pan on four other shades. My ultimate goal with this palette is to hit pan on every shade, and I think I can do that by the end of this year. I do really like the formula of the shadows. The mattes are blendable and really nice. The glitter is the only one that I have a little bit of issue with the fallout on. Um, but then we've got like the shimmers over here that are also beautiful, and they make amazing highlights. I love like making this double as a face palette. I do have actually another palette just like this one from Marc Jacobs, but it's their green palette. It's kind of neutral, but it's got a nice pop of green in there. I've told myself I'm not really going to use that one until I'm completed with this one. But I do keep coming back to this. I do take breaks every now and then from this palette, but ultimately I always come back to it. And for me, it was a goal of mine to do this, but also I don't think I would have been able to get this far if the palette wasn't as good as it is. The next palette that I keep coming back to is from ColourPop. Their original palette, the Yes Please palette. This is your ultimate drugstore priced warm palette. You really don't need any other warm palette if you have this one. I rearranged mine because I don't like the way that they arrange their shadows in here, but they're super easy to depot. So I just put all the shimmers on the bottom row and then I put the mattes just arranged kind of in a color story in the first two rows. The packaging does get very messy, it looks kind of gross, but you really can't beat the quality on these shadows. For the price, the quality on this is unreal and whenever I think of a warm eye or I feel inspired to do a warm eye, this is the palette that pops into my head and the one that I end up reaching for. Over the actual Sunset palette by Natasha Denona, I own that one too. I reach for this one over that one. It took me a few months to get this palette. I had to get it like on the second or third restock because it blew up the internet when it first came out. So if you haven't tried it, I'd highly recommend you do. I have a lot of other ColourPop palettes in the same like packaging, but really this is the only one that I'm reaching for. The next palette, one that I keep going back to for one look specifically that I absolutely adore, is the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. This was the first large Too Faced palette that I ever bought. Before this, all I had were like the nine pan or the nine pan tin palettes, like the boudoir eyes and the natural eyes. This was the first like larger Too Faced palette that I ever bought. At first, I really had no idea what to do with this palette. I was a little bit confused with the colors and with the story. After looking up a few tutorials and actually stumbling onto one by mistake, I realized how versatile this palette actually is. My favorite look to do from this palette is actually inspired by 
Paige from Thrifty Beauty. She did a pumpkin spice eye tutorial. I'll throw it up in the cards up here. It is so simple but beautiful. Whenever I wear that eyeshadow look, it takes me less than two minutes to do. I think she has a two minute tutorial on it. It takes me less than two minutes to do and I get complimented every time I wear that look. I love it. And I think it has to do with the shade Luscious right here. It's one of the my favorite eyeshadows of all time. I don't know what it is about like the depth. Oh, it's just this great shimmer. It's not quite a copper, but it's, oh, it's just, let me swatch it because we're going to have to swatch it. Like it looks just like this beautiful like Moscow Mule mug kind of shade, but with a little bit of like brown depth to it. And you could use this with any combination of shades and it'll still look beautiful. But particularly with the browns, it, oh my God. It just gives such depth to the eye. It works great all over the lid. It works great on the lower lash line. I think like I fell in love with this palette because of that shade, Luscious. Because I do have that look that I go to now, I've been reaching for this palette even more and then I've been reaching more for other shades in this palette as well. When I first got it, I was a bit disappointed with the two greener shades in the palette, but as I've learned how to work with them, um, Tempting is a little bit, it's pressed a little hard, so you do have to work with it a little bit differently than you normally would. And Bless Her Heart does take a little bit of packing on if you want it to be green. They're really sheer. So if you want a sheer wash of green, which there are certain looks, like that would look beautiful. But for me, I'm looking for like green. So if I want that, I just have to use it a little bit differently than the way that I believe they were intending for like a sheer wash of green. Overall, this color story is fantastic. You have purples, warm oranges, pinks, yellows, greens. You have so much versatility in this palette that I really don't think you un can understand the depth of on a first look, on a first try. You really have to like cover up parts of the palette and be like, okay, so what can I do here? And then like go over and cover up and be like, oh, so look what's over here or bring from different sides of the palette. I just think that there was a whole lot of hype around this and I know a lot of people were sick of hearing about the Sweet Peach palette, but I get it. Like, I understand it. The smell is a little artificial, but honestly, I don't smell it that much when I'm doing my makeup. It's only when I do this that I can actually smell it. One of my all-time favorite palettes. Highly recommend. The next palette that has been a staple in my collection is from BH Cosmetics, the Zodiac palette. This is a fairly large palette, but I do love the way they arrange the shades. It does get a little messy. I do have some shadow kind of everywhere, but these are some of the best baked shadows I've ever tried, ever, hands down. I love these mattes. This is a very, I, I think it's like a fall color story in here, but you can get some nice spring looks with the pinks and the purples down here. But I'm really attracted to like this earthy tone right here on the top. I love the Aquarius, Capricorn, and Sagittarius matte shades. And my all-time favorite shimmer is actually Pisces. It's a beautiful shade. I've tried other BH Cosmetics baked shadow palettes, and they're not the best but I think they did something to change the formula in this palette because these baked shadows are so soft. They are blinding, like, here. Okay. Yep, like I just touched it for two seconds. Blinding, they look stunning on the lid. I always use a glitter glue with anything on my lid because I do have such hooded eyes, but they do last all day. This isn't an all-in-one palette just because I don't have like those light matte shades that I need for highlighting or for setting my primer but you can get so many looks out of this palette and it's so affordable it's always around $20 wait for it to go on sale BH Cosmetics always has sales you can get it for less than $20 and you're gonna be able to use this for so many different looks so many and I think the versatility is why I keep coming back to this palette because I can go very light pink I can go very spring I can go very blue I can go very dark there's a nice matte black in here there are so many nice browns and I just cannot get enough of the Capricorn shades I mean I am a Capricorn so maybe I'm a little bit biased but 
I love greens and I love that Capricorn was a green and both those shades are stunning. So no matter what else I have in my collection, I keep coming back to this palette. Okay, so this last one might be a little bit controversial, but I'm going to throw these two palettes together because they're from the same brand. Two palettes I keep coming back to from ABH, Modern Renaissance, and Subculture. I know a lot of people are like, okay, we get Modern Renaissance, but why Subculture? It got so much heat. It got everything under the sun. I cannot get enough of this color story. I get so inspired looking at this. And I don't feel that way looking at a lot of palettes. I look at it, I look at other palettes and I'm like, okay, God, how am I gonna get this to work? What am I gonna do? I look at this palette and I'm like, oh, I can do this, 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 this. And I have more ideas than I have eyes to do them on. <laughs> this is a little tricky to work with. This isn't like your everyday, like throw something on and get out the door kind of palette. This is something that I need time. I need to sit down block out like half an hour of my time to work with this palette. But for me, I like that. My favorite part of doing my makeup every day is my eye makeup. So if I can find the time to sit down, relax, do my makeup, listen to a podcast or watch some other YouTube videos while I work with this, that's my me time. I love it. <laughs> for me, there's only one shadow in here that is a total dud and that is cube right up here. It's already got a bunch of hard pan in there. I can't make it work. The rest of the shadows I can, it just takes more effort, but I think that it's worth it given how inspired I am by this palette and by the color story. With Modern Renaissance, I feel like this one kind of speaks for itself at this point. I do have a whole video on a palette resurrection with the Modern Renaissance. I'll throw that up in the cards so you guys can check that out. I talk a lot about my history with this palette and why I always feel so inspired by this palette there, so I'm not going to repeat myself, but the hype around this is real. It really is. I did say like that ColourPop palette is your go-to for your warm shades before your reds for your berries. You really don't need any other palette. You also get some amazing neutrals in here. Warm Taupe and Cypress Umber can make a beautiful everyday look because you only need to tap your brush in just a little bit because they're so soft and you can get a beautiful everyday work appropriate look right there. I like that you can go from a light everyday neutral warm eye to like very statement nighttime looks, editorial looks within the same palette. And I think that's a running theme of what I'm looking for in a palette. I'm looking for the versatility. I'm looking for something that inspires me. I'm looking for versatility and I'm looking for a palette that I can dip into 5, 10, 15 times and not get the same look out of. So those are all the palettes that I actually find myself going back to within my large eyeshadow palette collection. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out my large eyeshadow palette collection video if you do want to see what's in the majority of my collection. I will be coming out with a large declutter video because a hundred's a lot. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you get a notification whenever that video comes. And I hope I'll see you in my next one. Bye!